Hello, my name is Roman Pils. I'm a patent attorney and today we're going to talk about the topic of patent research. Why is it important and how to do that? The first thing is why you should consider it. First of all, think of it, the patents are just a right to prohibit, not actually a right to use it. That makes more sense if you look on the left side of the slide. Here we have an example of an IP landscape. I say IP is intellectual property, patents, trademarks, designs and they are most of the time broader than the actual products you find on the market. So take a look at that and if you want to produce a product, you want to make sure that it's free of rights of others. So therefore, you should consider researching, for example, patents. Here you have an example, you see here your potential product and it might touch company E's intellectual property rights. But you need to identify that, otherwise it's just a dark room Anything might come out from that, so you want to make sure. Also, what's nice of it, you will get a feeling for your market. Because patents are filed, or patent acquisitions are filed prior to the actual release, and you might see what they do in the future. Sometimes you do this, it also gives you a feeling who's your closest competitor and who's more far away. Also with that comes trends. Where do companies focus on? Probably on the market, you have identify a company which may be a competitor. They actually do it now, but they won't do it in the future, which is good for how you organize your product or also your company in the future. If you consider a patent application, of course, you get information on the prior art that's already there, how other companies try to get patent protection for that. This already gives you a first insight for your research, which we come to the topic later. And, if necessary, if you identify patents you might infringe, you could consider workarounds for that because you're still probably in the process of developing the process or your product and you see, okay, if I do it like that, I will infringe it, go the other way. But if it comes to the question of true infringement, it's a very difficult um, question. Also, we have to discuss this a lot. So, if, it's, if you really want to make sure, contact a professional. Okay, so if you say you want to do that, how you do that? There are two to three options you have. The first one is, of course, because money is not there, do it by yourself. All the patent applications normally get uh, available to the public after 18 months. And there are from the different patent offices, different sources, you could consider databases, I've linked them here. Um, just try it out. Probably you get some or not. Another option, of course, is contacting a professional, which may be an engineer, a researcher, or a patent attorney. Most thing that is the difference between us is the, what you pay them per hour, to be honest, and also the patent attorney is allowed to represent you in the office, before the patent office. But the other ones sometimes specify on researching and might even be cheaper and get you more out of your money. But it comes down to who you get to and what you want to have. Also, one option to consider is, because it may even come later, that you file a patent application. And what happens is, if you file a patent application with an office and you file a request for examination or for search, there are examiners, those guys are experts in these technical fields, and they will search prior art, and this will also include patents and patent applications, relevant for your idea. So you will automatically get a search while filing a patent application. So sometimes it makes more sense just to file a patent application and have that search already included or do a prior art search if you're not sure if it's going to function or not. Just to keep it in mind, because with the patent application you will have to pay the money either way, so you'll have it there also. If you say you want to do it by your own, um, keep in mind that patent application protect the idea in general. That being said, you see here you have your technical solution, but there's different layers of abstraction to that. Because the products, this is your product, but there may be several products below your idea. So what you should do, or what you can do, is make these abstraction layers by yourself. Think about it. This also helps you probably where you can sell your product later. 
Here you have a smartphone with a specific chip, which would be also a mobile device or an electronic device even. So consider, for example, an iPad. It doesn't have to be the smartphone. And this kind of extraction we pattern underneath do all the time with your ideas. And you can do it now two ways. Either you search by your specific words and you might get some patent to patent applications to get into the wording. You can also identify your IPC class because all the technical stuff is related under physics, chemistry, and so on, and more specific way down there. So you can cut it down your search with your words. So you have more item filters you can use here. And then from what you found, you can gather some extractions useful for you, and again, research with that. So we'll have more items that you find, and then probably it will help you. The last thing is, if it comes down to infringement, I already said it before, it's a very hot topic, to be honest, and you might consider conducting a professional if you say this might be something that we infringe or not. That again, please, those attorneys and patent attorneys to always offer a free first uh, conduct and you can take that. And always do it most early, not too late, because if you already developed your product and you are some in, somewhere in the, in the scope of protection, it's hard. So consider that first. Thank you for your attention and if any questions, you can always reach out to us.